Hi my muddy people, welcome back. I'm Nat at Mud Magic. Thank you for joining me again for another Freddie Mercury Kiln Unload. Yes, me, Trace is not here today. Uh, she's out and about. She's back in the real world now, so she's not here today. Uh, so I still wanted to get this done because I've got my live next week, a week from today, so about an hour before now, in a week. Uh, so hopefully you can all join me. Um, but I've had a sneak peek at the top shelf. I'm not really very happy with it. It's all right, but I'm not happy with it. So I decided I'm going to try and push through my mug kiln for my uh, my um, live. But plus two, my live will be one that will then be my 100th video. So I thought, oh, how exciting. I wanted to do something for my 100th anyway. So this is my 99th video. So um, let's get into it. As I said, it's a bit, it's not really bad. It's just a bit boring, the top shelf. So let's get into it. So five, perfect five, I'd call that. Absolute perfect five. Uh, so then we've got, this was the bubble that I did a video of which um, I'm really happy with the bubbling, but I'm not happy with the colour because Trace asked me to do blue and green bubbles together ages ago. She didn't ask, she just commented. And she knows when she says things, I have to do them. Um, so I did, and you can't really tell. You can. You can see if you look close. You can see the green and the blue. I think I use blue-green, so they're too close in colour. So I need to do it again, which is fine. I'll do another one. Uh, but I love the actual bubbling. The bubbling is beautiful. So if you've seen my video, when I took it out, it had these patches where the bubbles hadn't touched, which is very normal. I tried to fix it and it looked, I didn't like it. It looked worse. So I ended up wiping it back and leaving it because I quite like those relief sort of areas. I don't mind that. So the funny thing was with my bubble glazing, I always love the bum. And so, except that you can't glaze it. So Lisa Finkel did a video on uh, lidded pots and how you can stilt the lids so that you can glaze underneath them. So I thought, well, I'm going to stilt this so I can glaze underneath it. Um, and then when I went to put it in Freddie, it was with the stilts, it was just too high by the tiniest little bit for me to shut Freddie. So I ended up wiping the clear off the bum. And so I didn't have to stilt it. So that's why it's a bit yuck, but I'm going to grind all that. But I must have missed bits <laughs> because it's caught. So I'm going to see how I go. If I grind it right back, those will be okay. This one's a little bit on the side, so I don't know if I'll be able to save it. But having the white patches, it might not be too bad. We'll have a look and see. So I'm going to go again anyway with more of a blue and more of a green <laughs> so that there's more contrast because I like the idea. So I got two cups, two straws, and blew them at the same time because I've done one over the other before and it doesn't look as good. So I did them at the same time so that they kind of mix together. But I'll do more, more contrasting blue-green when I do it again. So this one is... Oh, I carved this and... It's black clay, and I wanted to get the courage to just put the Sahara Amoco Zinc Free Clear on it, and I love it. I wasn't sure, you know, because, it, you know, just clear, it doesn't hide your imperfections, but then, you know, pottery's not perfect, right? You guys are always telling me that. Look at how shiny. That's actually the dipping clear, and I've got it right now. Touch wood, but it, I held it a little bit longer, about five seconds, and it's beautiful. So you can see that, um, you know, you probably shouldn't um, point out your imperfections, but you can see where I've carved it. There's bits that are not perfect, but pottery is not perfect. So I love that. Just black. Trace would probably like that with a whole black and white theme. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that's beautiful. I think it's just the shininess of it that I love. So this one, I decided to do good old rainforest snow and did the three rainforest for snow. Finally got the big oil spot that I love. So I absolutely love the oil spot effect that I got. But 
I don't, I use stickers so that I'd have flowers in the rainforest be left behind and I don't really like it. Um, I just, they're a bit funny how they don't have a middle bit and, and things like that. But you know, I, but the rainforest snow, oh, that has oil spotted beautifully. So I don't know what I'll do with that. I think I'll just take it to the markets as is and um, see what happens. Cause I mean, it's beautiful. It's just not, yeah, the stickers are not right. Um, so this one, this one um, was a tester really, but it was my mistake. Oh my God, this glaze is glorious. Brand new glaze to me. But I thought that I had put Mulberry Mixing Clear Celadon on it to, te to see what the, because I don't like Mulberry Celadon, but I wanted to see what it would be like 50-50 with Mixing Clear to lighten it. And that's what I thought was on it. So I didn't put a cookie under it. So of course it's dribbled off because of Spectrum, we all know they run, and it caught on the shelf. So that, it's okay because it's just a tester. So I don't, um, I don't really mind, I'm just, I just wanted to see what the glaze was like, but what's the glaze? The glaze is called Textured Mulberry from Spectrum. And look at the gorgeous flex you get. There's nothing else on that. Just Textured Mulberry, Heartbreaks on Texture. It's a bit filled in, but this is, um, this is a flower texture. So if you just carved like, and this is outwards because it's slip cast. If you carved in, I think it'd be really nice. Um, just like random carving rather than an actual pattern. But look at that color. Oh, textured mulberry. I will be using that a lot. It's such a pretty purple. It looks a bit, maybe a bit dark on the camera, but it's quite a light like this lighter sort of purple. Oh, it's beautiful. And I don't know why that made me think, except that I was talking to Janine about it. Um, it was a sad day in the Mud Magic family yesterday. Uh, Stevie the Wonder Wheel has gone to his new home. So I spent a day with Janine yesterday. We went to Keynes for a couple of hours. It wasn't meant to be that long, but we ended up having lunch with Meg who works there because they have like a lunch truck out the front. So we're like, oh, well, it's lunchtime. And there was nobody in there. So we had lunch with her and <laughs> we, uh, Janine had a ball because she's never been there before. She's, she was from a couple of hours away. So she loved it. Um, and then she came over here and we spent a couple of hours or four hours or something throwing on Stevie or she threw a few pieces. So she threw her biggest bowl, two kilo bowl that she has done so far and she did so well. I told her, Stevie the Wonder Wheel. So I hope my Stevie the Wonder Wheel take two who's meant to be coming this week. I hope he is a Wonder Wheel as well because I'm going to really miss Stevie but I'm really glad that he's gone to a good home. So that textured mulberry, oh, do you love purple? And it kind of breaks a bit pinky. Oh, get your hands on that. Oh, beautiful. I love that color. All right, marbling. So I did my marbled vase video where I did the blue and the turquoise and then I did the ovals of the red and the peacock dot in the middle and stuck the ovals on around it and pulled this vase. I like the form, don't like the colors really. They're okay, um, but I've never used the peacock before, so I was very interested to see that. Um, I've got another green, malachite green. It's very similar actually to the malachite green, so it probably look nice with black, but look at this marbling. So the blue and the turquoise together, oh, I'm loving that at the moment. I've never done that before, but how pretty is that? So that an inside is just the blue and turquoise because I only put the dots on the outside. So, um, I mean, it was just an experiment to see how it would throw and the, the patterns I would get. And I love the patterns. The colors just don't really go together and I just did an altered room on it. So yeah, so there you go. So if you watch the video, that's the end result. It's interesting to look back on the video and see how much darker and how much shinier and more vibrant they are after firing the stains because it, that was quite pastel when I threw it. You can go back and have a look, but that's, uh, that's beautiful. All right, so this one I decided, I, I don't know why I decided. 
I got in an ombre mood. <laughs> so I ombreed all of the uh, celadons, or not all of them, some celadons, and put this butterfly stickers on top afterwards, which I learnt from Cara at Amico that you can do that with any stable glaze, any stable glaze at all, you can put under glaze transfers on top and it's fine. So this is cobalt into downpour, into rainforest, into jade, into um, succulent and then I think, I think there's another one, oh anyway, tangelo and marigold and marigold inside. And you know I'm not a big fan of marigold, but it's okay. People like it, so I thought I'll just do it. I was going to do the mixing clear version, and maybe I should have because I much prefer it. But it's okay. And I love the butterflies. They're my um, Temu butterfly transfers. They're beautiful. So I'm happy with the blending. I'm, I'm getting better blending thanks to Paula McCoy, Colours for Earth. She talks a lot about blending colours and a lot more water required than I thought. So now that I'm really using a lot of water and water at the end on the lines in between, just water on your brush to blend them. And yeah, I'm, I'm getting much happier with the gradients. I used to just get these really strict, straight, harsh lines, which they're still lined, but it's more blended, well, for me, like to what I used to do it is anyway. So that's good. Okay, so that is that shelf done. Um, I know there's sunflowers in here, but I don't know what's, if that's next shelf. So let's have a look. Oh, oh my God. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, that just took my breath away. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I hope this is not stuck. Oh, five. Oh. Oh my god. Oh, it's not stuck. Oh. Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh sorry. Wow. Oh. Oh my god, I need a minute. <laughs> wanted all the time of doing pottery I have wanted to do to find get the courage and do my own color my own glaze combo not my own color my own glaze combo because you hear how many times I give shout outs to people I watch thousands of hours of YouTube and I I copy and I feel like I copy I know we all do it but I feel like I maybe emulate a better word other potters all the time and I don't have the courage or the experience to know what goes together and to do my own combos that's my own combo that's I've tried before but I've never succeeded oh yeah. wow so that again is a video I did of a five kilo 10 11 pound five kilo 11 pound bowl that I threw I wanted the biggest I could fit in Freddie and it was but then when I turned it over to trim it oh sorry the the walls wall cracked just in one spot it cracked so I decided to go with it I hated it because I thought it really looked like I had done that you know and maybe because I know what I look I'm looking at and potters will know what they're looking at so I don't know maybe the general public wouldn't but I don't care you're not going anywhere anyway so who cares so how funny from a bowl I hated that I went with because of that blue bowl I did a few kiln unloads with I went with it and cracked the entire rim and again how glaze can save a bowl I don't know I haven't even given it an oh my gloriousness but of course oh my gloriousness but I think crying is <laughs> is even um, 
better than that. Wow. Oh God, sorry, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Oh no, I wish Trace was here. Wow. I should stop the video and restart. Oh wow. Okay, so what is it? It's got a billion glazes on it. Oh, so you know why this even exists? Oh my gosh. I have to give a massive, massive, massive thank you to Karina at Mud to Fire. She made a joke with this exact bowl. I put it up there. She said, oh, she commented on my YouTube something like great bowl or something. I don't know. So I messaged, I commented back on YouTube. So you can see the comments. And I commented back and said, you know, what glaze would you recommend? She said, oh, you're asking the wrong person about glazes. How about all greens? Ha, ha, ha. Because she knows I hate green. Really cracked me up. So I thought in response to her and as a direct uh, throwback to her green comment, I'll do all pinks. So I would never have done this otherwise. So thank you, Karina, because I would have thought all the pinks would have blended together into each other. Um, but I, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have. I would have. I would have put some purple or something on it to try and break up the pink, thinking that they'll all look very monotone. But I thought, no, I'm not going to because of her joke. That I'm going to joke back and do all pink. So. Far out, that's a spectacular. So, um, big bowl, so there's a lot. So, um, I first of all, I did the whole thing in, um, um, oh God, now I can't remember what it's called, I don't know. Oh, Flux Blossom. So two coats of Flux Blossom over the whole bowl. Then I did three coats of Flux Blossom outside, over the whole outside, only two inside. Then I did the peacock technique, which you can't tell really, um, but that's fine. So I did um, W's, I've got a before photo as well. I'll put it up on Facebook if you're on the Amico or Mako group, because I can put it in both, I'll put a before photo, a glazed photo. W's of light flux. And then I did, normally with um, the peacock technique, I do three colors three rows of W's and three colours. Well, I did four this time because it was a bit of a bigger bowl and I thought, well, I want to get different gradient or different styles of pink, so I wanted more colours. So I did <clears throat> dots within the W's of pink opal, raspberry mist, chun plum and reactive red. And then over the, um, yeah, over the top of that, which I don't normally do with the peacock technique and that's why it's changed it, only on the rim. I did two coats and I'm going to just pause for a minute and show you and play the glaze guessing game what glaze is that and that's actually the back of it is only it whereas the insides all those other colors so that is two coats of poppy fields and the reason I did it was because I've wanted to put the, start layering the jungle gems because everyone layers the crystalline glazes, but not too much on the jungle gem. But also because we always have that joke with Trace around amaryllis. And every time I say, what's that? And it's amaryllis. And she says, poppy fields. So I thought this time, and she's not here, I'm going to say, what glaze is that? Hoping she'd say amaryllis. And it's poppy fields. And that is Lisa Finkel at Finkel Pottery played with poppy fields recently too. So that's just poppy fields outside. That's why I'm showing you so you can see it clearer. But inside, oh my goodness. So I don't know if you can see down the bottom, the flux blossom, it's very similar to honey flux, but it's got a pink blush to it. And oh God, it tones in well with those colors. And then the W's and the poppy fields over the top has kind of hidden the peacock technique but you can still see the peacock feathering runs like you know down but because I put the poppy fields band two coats around the rim it's it's kind of blurred which I don't care oh my gosh you saw my reaction oh I don't care well gee I'm actually um I'm almost tempted I, I don't I don't think I'll put that as my thumbnail until Trace has seen this video we're going to watch it tonight together and once we do I'll change my thumbnail because I don't want her to see that till I pull it out and 
obviously, obviously it goes without saying I'm keeping it. So she'll get to see it in real life when she comes up next weekend. I hope that translates on camera because otherwise you're all going to think I'm a weirdo getting so excited by it. But, oh, wow. It's quite heavy. But again, I'll put it that way. Uh, again, I don't care because I'm keeping it. So what does it matter? Nobody's going to care. Wow. Wow, that was way too long on one piece. I'm sorry, but I'm sure you fast forwarded me. Um, oh, now I'm really glad I didn't keep that for my life. <laughs> uh, I think, oh, this would be the sunflower. So you saw that I did it. Oh, no, it's all cracked. So this is just a tester. So you, you, I did a little short or a little video, mini video, uh, unmolding it out of the, uh, it's a silicon mold, a sunflower silicon mold. And I, I poured slip because I pushed clay into it and I didn't like it. It didn't get the textures and it was really thick and heavy and I didn't like it. So I thought I'm going to try it with poured slip. So I poured slip in it because it's silicon mold, not a normal, um, whatever they're made of, the plaster moulds that soak the water out. That's the whole purpose of them. The silicon obviously doesn't do that, it's just plastic. So it took about five days to dry. And I thought I, after a while it wasn't going to dry, but it did. But that is probably why it cracked. But I'm going to try it again because I absolutely love the, the form and the shape of it. But um, yeah, <laughs> the back has all cracked. But the back does, as you can see, I had it on the the silica sand whatever it's called um the back doesn't matter because you would hang it on a wall or something i also want to try and i was asking julia at ceramics by julia because she's an expert to me <laughs> she probably wouldn't agree but i think she is hand builder brilliant beautiful hand builder so i asked her about uh, any techniques and suggestions she had for raising the side up while it's still um leather wet not leather hard just before leather hard um and i'm glad i well it wouldn't have mattered because look at that crack but at least being a tester the first one i've done i know because if i had lifted the walls i would have thought that was why um so i'll try again but what happened as well i think because it dried so slowly the middle bowed up so when i took it out of the mold it was still really flexible so i put a quarter of a bag of clay in the middle and it held it down it didn't crack and and when i took it off a day later or something it stayed flat so that's probably why i couldn't see any cracks but that's probably why it's done that um so julia said that she may do a video on sunflowers on um bowling them i don't know whether she whether or oh, i think that was what she was saying she's gonna do i don't know. anyway but anyway the colors i love so i'll try again so the middle of that, as you know, we sing it, Cosmic Tea Dust, <laughs> love. I can't really see the glitter. I'll do it in the sun. It's a daytime today now, so I'll do it in the sun, put up a short. Uh, Tangelo, so I did uh, three, I think, Cosmic Tea Dust. Yeah, three Cosmic Tea Dust. And then I did um, three full marigold. And then I came over just the middle bit with two Tangelo. So last time I did that, I only did one Tangelo and you couldn't really see it. So I did two, but I think I prefer the one. The one Tangelo is a lot more um, subtle for the dark shading. Whereas that, and that's a very strict line. I should have blended it out better, like my bowl. <laughs> so, yeah. But you know, for a first try, I love the mold. The mold is beautiful. If I can get it to work. Because obviously being silicon, I don't know what its purpose is. It's not clay. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm not that disappointed by that because it was just a test. So, last shelf. Oh, just put that on the ground. <coughs> okay. Oh. <clears throat> All right. So, did a refire. Oh, let's check the comments. We've got quite hot down here. Oh, definitely five and a half, nearly a six. Five and a half on the bottom. So I refired that planter from the last unload. Uh, textured turquoise toasted sage. 
and it's worked perfectly. You can't see that crawl, there were two crawls. So I've, I'm starting to get really good at, at refiring. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, because <laughs> it means my first attempt failed. But what I have learned, so I will tell you, is if you're gonna refire, if you've got, um, I had it, it crawled here and here, so in, even if it was just in one spot, I used to just put the glaze there and refire, but you get this circle patch, even if it runs, it just looks different. So now I do the whole band of wherever the reglaze bit is, I do a whole band right around and that it works really well. So I did a whole band just of toasted sage. I think I did two coats, I can't remember. Um, and it's fixed it. But what I learned from Cara, I got in touch with Cara quite a while ago now and I asked her about refiring and reglazing and she messaged me back and she said, I'll do a video on it. So she did. So what she said was all these stories, people ask all the time about refiring, about spraying hairspray on beforehand to make it a bit sticky, about heating it up in the microwave to heat your glaze to let, get it to adhere more. She said, all of that is just old wives tales. None of it does an absolute single solitary thing. The hairspray makes it take even longer to dry um, and it can even be a wax resist depending on the type of hairspray you use. Uh, and heating it up in the microwave is pointless because you know how hot your kiln gets. The microwave's not doing anything. It's not melting the glaze, not doing anything. So I ditched, I tried all those ideas. I ditched them all. So all I do now is literally chuck glaze on and put it back in the kiln. I do not prep it at all, I don't sand it, I don't do anything to it and it works the best of any that I've tried. I've tried a few and just stick and glaze back on uh, works really well. So there you go. So no crawl, you can look back at the crawl in the last video. I think it was the last one, maybe the one before. It was a recent one anyway. So that's, yay, saved piece. So this one's, actually this is good, I can show you. This is funny because you know how I did the little the little sauce bowl for my noodle bowl and I said, oh, glazed it wrong. I'm going to have to do another big bowl and another little bowl. So they're both in here. So this was the original bowl where the little dip bowl had a big chunk out of it. So I had to do it again and I did the wrong glaze on it. So this is the correct glaze now. So I have a set now. So it hasn't run at all this time. So what it is, it's one power turquoise, one floating lavender, one power turquoise, one floating lavender in that order. But what I did, because the last one ran so much and caught, I just did the first two coats there and then this, oh no, sorry, the first two coats over the whole thing. And then the second two coats only up to about there. And still the colour to the bottom, you can't even tell that I did that, which is great. You can't tell I gradiated it at all. So that's awesome. So I have a set now, very happy with that. And then the other one, which I did the, oh, <laughs> scroll, which was all about crawling. So you're gonna have to refire this one. That's weird. Uh, that is my go-to textured turquoise smoky mellow, smoky mellow chum plum in that order, sells really well. Smoky mellow, oh no, sorry, textured turquoise smoky mellow chum plum, then repeat textured turquoise smoky mellow chum plum and you get the mottled effect. But it's crawled, which I've never had that combo do ever before. But that was the, what I did the little dip bowl in by accident. Instead of that, I did that. So now I would have a set, but it has it's dribbled off a tiny bit, but I'll just put that on a raised cookie and refire it. So because the glaze is quite thick, I don't know if I'll put, and it's quite low. I don't know if I'll put more glaze on that. I might just refire it because there's a big blob of glaze above that. So hopefully it will just run down um if i put more glaze it's going to run off even more i don't know i'll have a look at it and have a think decide what i want to do now this one i just snuck in because it fit oh no oh, i really need you guys advice on why that happens so this was the same bubbling uh video the same blue and green and again it's modeled together um but i did these little saucer slash plates, and I did bigger soup um, mugs, but the soup mugs couldn't fit in here, so they'll probably be in my live. But I, this fit, so I thought we'll just stick it in because I had had room. But I love the bubbling. But look at the—it's got this sand again. 
And I don't know how that's happening. I really don't know. And it's always the bottom shelf that does it. It's very rough. I'll sand it, but I'm going to have, probably just have to throw it away. So it's not pinholes. It's outward like sand. It feels like sand, like grog. There is grog on the shelf, but the grog is underneath, obviously. The grog is under here. So how could it jump up into here? And it only ever happens on that very bottom shelf. That's really annoying. But again, the blue and the green have sort of melted together into each other, so I don't really like it. That's just a slip cast little saucer that I had. So I just slip cast it so I can do that again. I can do it a hundred times, it's easy. But yeah, that's weird. If anybody, I don't know, if anyone has any thoughts on it, I don't know. Last piece. So, hmm, this is one, I think I saw on Lisa Finkel. This is one of those kind of glazes where I think that um, it's nice for somebody. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't like it, but I don't think it's hideous. And I think somebody will probably look at it and love it, but I don't like it at all. Brown and green together, <laughs> not me. So what that is, I'm sure it was Lisa Finkel that did it. Sorry if you didn't, Lisa, but it's winter wood. And it was the end of my bottle and I didn't add alabaster to it. I should have poured some alabaster into my bottle and mixed it because it was very crystally. So that's why it's so brown. Winterwood times two, I think, because there were so many crystals. And then the top is powered turquoise. But what it was, it was winterwood here and then a band of light flux on top of the winterwood and up a bit. And then overlapping on top of the light flux was winter was uh, sorry power turquoise winterwood all over. That's why I got the brown up here. Winterwood all over. So maybe I should have only done the winterwood to here. Maybe that's what I did wrong. Maybe Lisa, if you could comment, maybe I should have just had power turquoise at the top, not winterwood under it. Um, but um, it's very matte, and I thought the power turquoise would make it more glossy. But maybe if I, because I've got the winter wood underneath, if I just had the power turquoise by itself, um, it would obviously be glossy because it's the winter wood making it go matte. So it's dribbled, but it's only dribbled a little bit. I can easily get that off. So that one's not even touching. You can see that's not touching. And then this one's caught, which I can easily go through that. And that's tiny little catch. Um, but there's even little drips that are on my shelf that have dripped off and dripped down. So yeah, that's an easy it's an easy fix in regard to the drips. And then I'll just put that on my wheel, my new wheel when I get in, Stevie Take Two, with my grinding, my diamond core grinding mat, and I'll just grind that flat. That'll only take me a minute. That'll be easy. But I do, I do think that it has potential for someone to like it. There's nothing wrong with it. It hasn't, you know, it hasn't pinholed or it hasn't done any frothing or anything. I just don't like it. It's just not my, um, not my colours. But, yeah, we shall see. And the people like the satin mat. I just don't like it as a personal preference. I don't mind it as a, like, down the bottom and then having a gloss at the top. So, kiln favourite. Well, <laughs> I wonder what could be the kiln favourite. Oh, uh, that. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, my oh, just divine for me. I wonder. Um, please, please, please comment. I love reading and replying to you guys' comments. Please comment. Am I crazy? Am I the only one? I know I'm a pink girl. I know it's just, oh, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else is watching going on, what are you going? You're crazy. But oh, far out. That's my, that is my goal. My glazing goal in life has been achieved. <laughs> so yay. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for joining. Please like and subscribe. It helps my algorithms. It helps more people find me and reach me. Um, and uh, I will put that up as the thumbnail after I watch with Chase tonight. So you'll probably see a different thumbnail. So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Stay muddy and have a magic day. Bye.